You are tuned to another episode of In Town Today. I'm David Charles and I'm with my co-producer, Helen King. Hello. We extend a warm welcome to you specifically and to all our other listeners, whether you're travelling, working or maybe just relaxing. In Town Today is where we talk with townspeople about their business, their occupation, their event or their motivating passion in life, or at least one of them. In this episode, we're meeting a current town councillor for Tetbury, and importantly, an election candidate in this week's local and district elections. Given the fizzy nature of all things at the moment, particularly with regard to the political climate, the business climate, and not to mention the global climate, we are taking this opportunity to get an inside line from one of the town's leaders, Anne Pierce. And with any luck, we have Anne on the line with us now. Hello, Anne. Hello, David. <laughs> Hello, Anne, uh, and welcome to the podcast. Um, we, we trust that you've had a, because we're at the back end of the day now, of course, we've, we trust that you've had a, a good day today and, and an enjoyable bank holiday weekend. I have, yes, thank you very much. I've had a relaxing bank holiday weekend, so not really done much, but just taken time for myself. Brilliant. Well done. Fantastic. In fact, um, we've, we've got, this is, this is the first, isn't it, of three bank holidays we've got this, uh, this month of May. Uh, yes. With the coronation coming up, of course, next weekend. Um, we're going to be very fizzy here in, in, in town, aren't we? Tetbury being the home of uh, Prince, Wins, Prince of Wales, of course, and now uh, King Charles III, uh, with another one at the end of the month. But anyway, the reason we have come together today is to talk about your election, uh, well, as it will be, uh, possibly, the election to the town council again and also to um, the uh, county, well, let's say the South Cotswolds District Council. So, Anna, I wonder if you'd like to tell us a little bit about that election, what's going on and when it went and, and, and where it's going on exactly. So, for the, yes, for the town council elections and for the district council elections, those elections take place on Thursday the 4th of May. Uh, this is the first time ever for elections that voters are required to take photo ID or have applied for exemption from Cotswold District Council with proof of their residence. Uh, it's going to be exciting, I think, particularly with regards to the, the district elections, uh, the current political climate as it is at the moment will make things interesting I think um, particularly with regards to how things move down from central government and then they end up at district and town level the um, district is politically run um, so it's quite difficult to infiltrate as um, an independent or even the Green Party. It, it's quite hard to get past those main political parties. Yeah, that, this is um, this is an interesting point that you've raised here. Because you're standing, Anne, as, as an independent councillor, aren't you? Yes, I am. Um, yeah. Can I ask you, have you always been independently minded have, or have you had an allegiance in the past to one of the, the major political parties? I have had an allegiance in the past to one of the, the major political parties. I think um, there's, we did a, a small meet and greet uh, last week on Wednesday evening and there were several candidates there that are standing for the town council elections and also the district, but also voicing very much that they were all standing as independents, and that is because they are disillusioned by main party politics, particularly at the moment and, you know, over the course of the last couple of years, it seems to have deteriorated considerably and left a lot of prospective candidates in a political desert with no real direction 
other than to say that they'd like to be independent, their main focus being the, the needs of the town. And we don't feel that the needs of the town are fully met by party policies. No, I can understand that. But what, what you're saying here is, is really interesting to us. I mean, from an organisational point of view, we are apolitical. I think that's the expression. We don't have an allegiance to to any political party at all. And, and that's true of us personally, to be honest. Um, but we're, all, we're particularly interested in the fact that you and so many others now are interested in standing as independent candidates. Because we feel, as I think you, you're suggesting, you do too, that people have become very unimpressed with the, the party political politics over the last, well, I can say it certainly over the last three years with, with the, what's gone on with um, COVID and, and so forth. Um, and it, it doesn't seem, I think, um, a lot of difference between the main political parties at Westminster these days. They seem to be all at one, which is, which is very worrying. Um, in fact, one of the, perhaps one of the good things is that um, recently uh, Andrew Bridgen, uh, MP has found himself on the outside of a major political party and uh, we understand now will be standing as an independent at the next general election all being well and I wonder if and if you feel there's going to be a drift away from party polit- politics to to indep- the independent approach like you're following is, is that something that you feel will will happen it's something that I feel will happen it's also something that I feel should happen um, particularly, uh, so in some time soon, there is in in the future there is the um, fact that they're going to split the Cotswolds. I believe the main thing now is that it will be um, North Cotswolds and South Cotswolds, and will be represented. Each of those areas will have an MP. Um, which one it is, I don't know, and we don't know who it's going to be, obviously. Um, there was time for... Uh, there was It was going to be Siren Sester and, and Malmesbury and, and North Wiltshire, this constituency, but I believe it is good. We really didn't want to drop the Cotswolds bit, so it was very hard fought, and, and the case was put to call it North Cotswolds and South Cotswolds. And I, and I do think that when you look at all CDC or Cotswold District Council as an organisation, it's, um, it's party-led. And I don't think that that allows for the, the total benefit of the whole of that community that it represents. Yes. yes, yes, that's a very good point. Yes, and do you know what? Whilst you're saying, speaking, I was, I was, I was kind of um, thinking, if um, part of the part of the solution to getting more people engaged in um, in in political affairs, shall I say, um, yeah. taking more interest in what's going on in their close environment. So in Tetbury, for example, uh, and and in, in wider South Cotswolds. Is the route to getting more people engaged in the political scene, shall we call it, is, is the route to moving away from party politics to to uh, independently minded people, independent, independently minded people that are willing and interested to listen to their constituents. Yes. Would, would you agree with that? Yes, I do. I, I do agree with that wholeheartedly. And I, I do agree with the the fact that when you when you choose a candidate and that you're choosing an independent candidate you can be assured that that um, candidate will take forward the best interests of your community once you get to Cotswold district council level they even then on decisions that are made within the within those council chambers are party whipped now if you have got an opposing view to your party you are still going to be party whipped into going with the the rest of the party and i think by being independent you're able to keep 
your voice, your voice for your town, your your area, and what you um, want to bring to the table. Yes. I mean, it, it's always seemed to us that this idea of uh, whipping support, uh, as it happens at Westminster, of course, and as you quite rightly say, it happens in, in district councils up and down the country, it, it doesn't seem quite right, does it? The, the, no. the people that are uh, elected to these positions should be speaking on behalf of their electorate, not on behalf of the okay. party. At least that's how yeah. we see it. Um, given that we've got this general election coming up uh, what is it next year isn't it i guess um we can see that uh, there could be a, a very serious sh- shake up in the um in the in in the power play at westminster and presumably we, we might see a little bit of that coming up this coming thursday yes i think we will yes i think that the there will be no doubt about that whether there'll be a major shift in the Cotswolds is um, debatable, but I do think in other areas there will be a, a shift in opinion. Yeah, <laughs> we see that coming. Well, we'll know all about it, I guess, by this time next week, won't we? But <laughs> yes, um, we okay, returning to returning to to Tetbury for a, for a moment, Anne. Yeah. Um, You've been uh, you've been a Tetbury lass for a long time, I think, haven't you? I have. I've been <laughs> yeah. years, years old, so that makes it fifty years now. Well, how about that? Didn't have to give that away, but there we are. Um, <laughs> so almost local. Almost, as they <laughs> almost say. local. Almost <laughs> local. Uh, and, and did I re- read somewhere that um, your your family actually originated from Tetbury? Although you you yourself, I think, were you either moved away or you you come back to Tetbury. Is that right? Yeah. So my my dad is originally from Tetbury. Right. Um, and my mum is originally from Liverpool. So uh-huh. I was born in Liverpool. Oh, right. And I lived there till I was six. My my school holidays before that were spent often at my nan's and my nan's house was in Malmesbury. So I know Malmesbury very well. Um, and I think, you know, as as two towns were very, very similar in the way that um, the size and the structure, although we do not have the infrastructure that Malmesbury has. And they're only five miles over the border, approximately the same amount of people, same amount of houses. However, they have the infrastructure to support it, whereas Tepley doesn't. Yeah, mm, that's true enough. And of course, they've, they're they absolutely um, covered with supermarkets in Malmesbury, aren't they? And um, OK, we've got, we've got two ourselves in, in Tetbury. But um, we were interested to to read Anne, about um, your thoughts on uh, increasing the services in Tetbury. Well, who wouldn't be interested in that? Um, but I think from the point of view of reducing, if I get this right, reducing the carbon footprint by people moving out of town to get various supplies and services and having them to, to obviously to return. Um, can you can you tell us, can you expand a bit more on that subject to, to, to tell us what, what you might have in mind to bring about uh, for the benefit well, that, of Tetbury? That would just follow on from what I've already done. Um, <laughs> since, I, since being on Tetbury Town Council, I joined in 2019. My aims then were to um, improve youth services, um, improve health and well-being, and sort some traffic management um, situations out. Unfortunately, I managed to get the the Audi roundabout lowered for visibility, but we can't get a safe crossing there, and GCC are still very reluctant to do so. Um, But as far as... I put forward a motion and um, gained a committee on Tetbury Town Council for the youth, um, and that was set up with a budget to to have um, a helping hand towards youth services within Tetbury and to expand them. Then also uh, the pandemic hit. We had a... um, Desire then to set up a health and wellbeing committee, and then we realised very quickly 
but actually this was going to be a benefit and we managed to keep and bring in more services into town than had previously ever been tried so currently Tepley Town Council during the pandemic the library closed down for example and that's where the young mums went to get their babies weighed right oh. library closed down Tepley Town Council managed to house the nursery nurse who did the the baby weighing and health visitors so that mums could stay in Tepley without having to travel. They would have had to travel to Dursley because that's where maternity services are um, and the health visiting team. And we were able to keep that in in Tepley at the town council offices and managed to do that in a safe and appointment um, style way. That still runs from Tepley Town Council. We managed to obviously um, employ a health and wellbeing coordinator. We started the Friendship Cafe. We have a lot of services, um, organisations like P3, Citizens Advice. They're all advisory. There's Job Centre um, advisor there who comes now as well. So I believe we've managed to bring into Tetrate the services that we felt People weren't able to get public transport to access or they had, you know, issues with transport of their own, but they would be able to walk to those things and still have the services that they require. Okay. So Excellent. so what would what would you say and is, is the next thing on your personal list to get to get into into Tetbury? On well, my personal list that I've still got some plans for some further um, groups that will benefit the residents uh, within the town. Um, Anything you can share with us now? I I can't say what they are at the moment because I'm working on them. (laughs) (laughs) Top secret. (laughs) Highly confidential. They're not top secret, but they are are health and wellbeing, which is mainly um, I worked for adult social care and I've worked in the NHS. Um, so health and wellbeing is my main agenda item. Right. Well, speaking of, okay, this is not really an election issue but here, but um, given your interest in that, in that area of life, what can you tell us briefly that would be of use to, for the residents of Tetbury and, and, and the locality to know about the progress of the new doctor's surgery for Tetbury? <laughs> So I, I um, watched the CDC planning meeting last week and was very disappointed that uh, they still couldn't make a decision on the surgery um, and are now requiring a site visit. Something I know that from like Tepe Town councillors who are on planning, they always have uh, the applications in advance the week before and then they will go and look and and do site visits of their own in order to make up their minds about planning applications that come to them before they go to CDC. And so I'm a little bit disappointed that CDC are now only just wanting to have site for it. Um, I thought they would have done that a while ago on such a major issue as well. Um, there is definitely a need to have a new health centre, um, a new facilities and better parking, not the risk of running the risk of you know having your car ticketed um, like it is currently in the ferns, and the car park is far too small. So I think in in general I'm I am really in support of us having new health facilities and I recognise the arguments of that it's in the town centre at the moment so it's accessible to all um, and so forth but I will remind people so was Malmesbury's doctor's surgery it was in the town centre and it's it's now out of the town centre 
you do get used to it. <laughs> you might not like the idea that where it's going to be, but you will get used to it. And I do think that currently, wherever you put the surgery, it's going to have to be on the outskirts of Tetbury. Mm. So there's always going to be a certain proportion of people who live locally that will need to drive to get to that surgery. So adequate parking spaces and ease of access are going to be vitally important. Yes. Of course, yeah, Bill. I think you're absolutely right. Essential. But given given where, what you've just said about the, the state of play with the CDC and planning applications, etc., we, we, we've got to be... We've got to be still two years away from that um, that facility being available to us, haven't we? We have, yes. Yeah. It's going to be a certain amount. There, there are clauses on it, and it, it is going to be a certain amount of time before it comes into the they have to have bricks laid for it on the sale of X amount of houses um, and and start work on it. So it is dependent on them selling the houses, but I don't think that will really be an issue. Um, And yes, it will take time to build. I think this, so planning or knowing that the doctor's surgery needs to um, move has been going on on various applications since 2016. And it's now really time that somebody really made a decision and give us something that we can focus on and move forward and and know that, you know, if it is going to take two years, it's going to take two years, but we know that we're going to have something at the end of that rather than this, oh, well, that one fell through again. Let's try somewhere else and, yeah. and go through the same process. Yeah. And as I said, it's been going on since 2016, so it's becoming a bit of a fiasco at the moment, I feel. Now, um, the, there's another site, isn't there, in, in Tetbury? And I'm thinking now of the Tetbury filling station site, which was a contender for the new surgery. Um, but as we learned from one of the senior doctors of uh, Phoenix Healthcare, um, it, the site was determined to be too small and presumably too small to accommodate the, the right size health centre, new health centre, and a requisite number of new houses. Um, so that's the reason why the health centre is going to be located now outside of town uh, on the on the north north uh, eastern side. Um, but tell us a bit if you if you what you know about the planning situation with regard to the Tesco's filling station site because there's there's projected to be something like forty five houses for that site is that right Anne? There there is I think it got reduced by a couple of houses because um, there was a requirement to put some green space within it. Um, the applications came. Originally to Tetbury Town Council, I was at uh, they, uh, the developers brought a presentation and promised the earth, and I'd like to see whether that actually happens when um, this development is built. But yes, it, after the GP surgery decided that it wasn't suitable for for requirements, um, the developer that wanted the land has is building these houses and yes it has been reduced by by a few houses to to accommodate green space within it well that's that's good to hear i mean there was a we were tracking the progress of uh, of the application some while ago and and there was a number of local people that were up in arms about um, the number of houses there and, and and what that would mean to an increase in the number of cars being parked and, and car movements etc not good so it's, it's 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 pleasing to hear that the number of houses has been reduced to to increase the green space um, but having said that there's an interesting question just to touch on briefly here and that is um this whole principle of cars now what we've been learning from the government of course is that cars are cars are bad for us all cars are bad for the climate etc cetera, etc cetera. um and we perhaps should all be driving electric cars which we uh, the jury's out on that f- from our own point of view for different reasons but um we wonder if uh, if maybe 
Tetbury Council, and maybe even you as an independent, Anne, might, might consider taking a closer look at the, the, the concept of car sharing. Um, there, there, so there is um, currently, uh, there's a highways working group um, who's been, who's, many of the residents that are on there have been on there for a considerable number of years and are very active within within that highways working group and they look at all sorts of things and that is yes that's that is a good and valid point to um bring to the table and i could take that forward i would say there's a car parking working group as well currently and they are looking at the issue of parking within the town and the increase in vehicles and the, the decrease in parking spaces that are available. And I think um, all of these need looking at in in a holistic way. So, that, so the car parking working group are um, actually investigating how many um, people would be interested in hiring out their driveways during the day. That's an interesting idea, well, isn't it? Yeah, that's a, that's it goes on in London, doesn't it? Uh, and other yeah. major and other cities, cities, I think. Yeah, yes, it does. Yes. Yeah, but that, that's one of the things that they're looking at and, and that they're questioning people as to whether they'd be interested in doing that. And I think, you know, that's, that's a really good thing. So I think tying that in all together and looking at, you know, the, the car sharing schemes and, and things like that can all go hand in hand with what those two working groups are currently looking at. Speaking of working groups, Anne, um, it, it, it's occurred to us over a long period of time that, that you know, we, we kind of ask a lot of our politicians, whether they be local councillors or, or MPs. Um, and of course, at, at MP level in Westminster, they have all kinds of resources available to them to, to assist. But, but speaking at local level, um, you've just mentioned the working groups um, and it's a it's, it's got to be a very onerous task to, to to try and work out some kind of equitable plan and sensible plan that could be beneficial to people what what is it um, what what if the council were actually leaders in terms of bringing the public together to use the ingenuity of individuals within the public to, to address these particular issues. In other words, that would take the pre- some of the pressure off of councillors like yourself, but, um, but invite the people to actually nominate uh, their thoughts and ideas that could be assessed by maybe the working group. Yeah, so what we do is we do generally encourage members of the public to um, join working groups We've got um, a health, wellbeing and youth working group that encompasses um, schools, different forms of health care, uh, different providers. It's also, you know, stretches out further than Tetbury. We've got um, Maggie's Cancer Charity, for instance, there in Cheltenham, so they come as well. Um they're in that working group and those ideas then go to a committee and what we we do encourage for the, the highways working group and the um, park car parking working group is that members of the public are the are the driving forces then for those ideas those ideas then go to the relevant committee and then the relevant committee can move those forward in different ways whether that's through funding something or or applying pressure onto Cotswold District Council or Gloucestershire County Council so I think we are public-led and there are quite a few members of the public that that actually do want to get involved I wish there were more but um Yes, I think if, if if people if people felt that uh, they could have an impact, uh, make a contribution in this way, uh, and meaningful way, I think I think people will be more encouraged to to come forward. Um, the trouble with with politics, as I think many people see it these days, is that they don't actually count. Um, they're only required to to walk into the polling station on a on a particular Thursday, put a cross somewhere, 
and that's them done. Everything else yeah. is done by politicians. Then they're they're off the frame. Um, it's it, it seems quite absurd that that that's all the the electorate have to do. Uh, yeah. But the electorate are interested in the health services. They are yes, interested in definitely. public transport uh, and all the infrastructures that go with modern day living. Um, and it, it occurs to us that you know the initiative you've just talked about is 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 spot on. It, it needs to be encouraged not just in, here in Tetbury but but all over the country really yes it, it should be and, I, and we do work very closely with the um with Highgrave and the Prince's Trust um who do an awful lot they've just been um facilitating some woodworking training for the youth together with the Tetbury Youth Club so and they do things equally um, with the elderly and those that are, are feeling isolated. And I think just to be able to bring those groups and remember that your town councillors that are standing are also volunteers. Yes. Yes, they are. They, uh, so it's, in general, most of your town councillors are, are independents. Um we currently have a GCC councillor on on Tetbury Town Council, so um, he's got uh, a party allegiance at both district and county. Uh, and we have one other member of the town council who has an allegiance to a political party, no, two, um, and two that are standing again with allegiances to political parties. However, most of the councillors are independent. All of Tetbury Town councillors are volunteers. And yes, we would encourage people to come forward onto the working groups to help us, to help them. Because town councils have very little authority in the greater scheme of things. So the authority really starts with district council and then county council and then on to central government and I, um, the responsibilities that um, Tetbury Town Council has, has taken on in the last four years have been more um, in the way of the youth, helping with the youth and the health and well-being and setting up services and even bringing services into the town. And that goes above our actual legal requirement to what a town council would normally do. That being said, we are leading the way. and we've, we've had a number of different town and parish councils that have come to us and said, how did you do that? <laughs> oh, fabulous. So, you know, we know that we're leading the way and there is a lot of positive stuff that has been done over the last four years. Um, you know, we set up the community fridge, which is about food waste um, and to prevent landfill and food going into landfill. And so, you know, those sorts of initiatives, Malmesbury Town Council turned around to us and said, hey, did you do that? So we pass on that information and they've set up their own. And there's plans to expand the community fridge in other directions. And I think, you know... That is us as town councillors and our officers being willing to just do that little bit more to help our community um, and the people in our community. Right, right. Do you know, okay. it, as you were saying that, um, uh, I was th you reminded me actually of our interest in, in the concept of community gardens. And I'm talking about um, the growing of vegetable, fruit and vegetables here. Um, we haven't talked about that this afternoon, and, and uh, but maybe at some point or other we could come back and talk about that issue and a number of a number of others. And uh, before we um, before we close this afternoon, I wonder if um, we could just touch on another subject, which yep. I know is 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 very sensitive with people, uh, and that is the subject of surveillance. Now, there's um, there are those people that are very uh, concerned that. Uh, that there's 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 a level of crime uh, around around Tetbury, but not just Tetbury. Of course, it's it's kind of um, endemic everywhere to a degree, yeah. um, and some people are absolutely 
dead in favour of having more CCTV cameras around. Um, yeah. We we see things differently. Actually, we don't see that that's the that's the solution at all. Um, but um, but from your point of view, Anne, what what how do you see this subject of of local crime? Uh, and I can think of one um, one shop in town that unfortunately got uh, attacked, shall we say, uh, damaged uh, on three separate occasions, I think. And and there was yeah. a call for CCTV cameras to to perhaps um, uh, alleviate the problem, shall we say. But what yeah. what's what's your personal take on on CCTV cameras and surveillance generally, Anne? Council in 2019, there was a councillor or a candidate that was looking to stand that was very interested in the concept of a community warden for Tepre. Right. Um, so some of us did pay that forward and it was investigated um, with the town council as to the pros and cons of a community warden, how much that would cost. You quite often see them, um, I've, I've seen such people in Gloucester City Centre, they're city centre wardens, um, but basically they do everything. So whether that's, you know, ticketing cars for parking in incorrect places, but also being on the lookout and being around the community to to warden it and to be part of part of the policing of the town, but uh, not on a police level. However, it turned out that that was going to be a very costly experience, and so was the the idea of setting up cameras in various places, particularly the high street um, and such. And so I think without that, that type of funding as a town council, it, it's not something that we, we could look at any further. However, my view on surveillance is, you know, I have um, a camera on my front door um, and so my husband has a camera at his business and we can look at that camera every time any motion sets it off and that has helped my husband with his business not to lose his property right. and so there is that um, benefit of you know, setting up your own surveillance, and and I know with um, with what you've been talking about, the um, there there has been su surveillance on that particular in individual who was the perpetrator of the, the breaking of the windows. Right. Right. Do you know? So, I I, I actually do believe that I think the way forward is going to be home video cameras and not um, video cameras of the state, shall we say? Yes. I think at the yes, domestic okay. level and commercial level, it's kind yeah. of acceptable, isn't it? Um, well, it's quite think, different, isn't it? Quite different. Situation. But this, this kind of blanket idea of surveillance of everything um, is, yes. is a bit worrying for people. Um, I, think, I think it is, and that's why I think probably... Um, you know, your home is your castle and, and so is your business. And so that, that for those instances, then it's worth the, the surveillance on your property, um, whether that be your business or your home. Um, but yes, the, the, the surveillance of, of just everywhere, I think, is uh, a little bit stretched. And I certainly wouldn't. To be there seems asked. to be this um, this, well, this gradual um, rolling out of surveillance um, generally. I mean, you know, you, you at, the, at the top of this podcast, you said uh, you made reference to the fact that ID cards are going to be necessary now in order to yeah. <laughs> to vote in a in an election, a local election. Yeah. Um, I mean, 
I, I can't I can't I can't see what's been wrong with the with the traditional way uh, traditional approach to this. Why do we I have to carry I, photo yeah, ID? I don't, to be honest, I yeah. don't, I don't think anybody really sees the um, positives of it. But um, you know, in, in in regards to that, I think we'll see a lot lower turnout of electors because of it. I think that you're highly likely right. Especially with this election. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's yes. going to be interesting to see what As happens here. But I... I think it will the the amount of people voting will get higher again. But I think it's going to be very low because of it with this. This is the first election that is happened up, yeah. and so I think this is the one that's going to be hit the hardest. Yeah, I can't help but uh, agree with you there, Anne. Unfortunately, I agree too. Yes. And just one before we leave that this particular subject, um, we were we were really interested to speak with the with the with the owners of that business that we were talking about. Yeah. Um, that that lost, I think, three shop windows in the short space of uh, a few weeks, really. Um, and um, we were really encouraged in at their attitude towards working this problem out. And, and, and I think I'm right in saying, and you probably know this, that uh, the persons concerned actually made a home visit to, to, the, to the perpetrator, shall we say, uh, or the, 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 yeah, shall we say the perpetrator, um, yeah. with a view to, to helping them in some way, which we thought was absolutely stonking. And... Thinking back to a moment ago when we were talking about wardens and town, and that sounds like an interesting idea, but and, and of course you said that it wasn't something that the town council could could fund, it was unaffordable. Uh, I was thinking, and as, as I've thought before, is it possible that there would be some people in town who could warden the town unpaid as volunteers? Um, and I'm not suggesting they walk around putting uh, parking tickets on, on cars, but yeah. perhaps go and see youngsters if they're identified as being a little bit wayward and seeing what can be done to help them to get get past some problems and, and perhaps open up some different opportunities. I mean, there could be other functions that, that such wardens could be engaged in, but I would think uh, certainly among, well, among the among among the population of the town, there could well be some people who'd be interested to help youngsters that are a little bit wayward. What, what do you think about that thought, um, Anne? I think that it's um, whilst it's a um, genuine thought and and yes, a a good idea on paper. The thing that strikes me about that is that it, it could be considered vigilante in fashion and I wouldn't want to um, be for something like that. Uh, there would be a huge requirement for training and checks and some sort of policing of a, of a, of a group like that or that heavens. would be willing to go around and, and it would be something that we would have to, or, or anybody wishing to start that up, would have to really go through the, the police and the neighbourhood policing team to see whether something like that is actually viable. Um, although, you know, yes, it, it's, a, it's a very good idea. And I know um, that well, we're still... Problems. We still have problems in the town. We have problem areas within the town, and some of that we have tried to look at with um, young Gloucestershire going around, as well as the Tepri Area Youth and Community Trust um, employees that that go around and do outreach work and try and reach out to the youngsters and talk to them and find out why it is there possibly bored or uh you know any other reason for them just all going to one place to meet and i think that that possibly is the, is the way forward if we can expand that sort of um service 
within the town for that particular age group. The young Gloucester should do do work with up to 21 years old, I think it is. So, you know, that something like that is would be my preferred route. Well, well, that sounds very similar. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, um, what whatever happens on Thursday of this week, and whether you are elected back into the town council and onto the CDC as an independent councillor, whether that happens or whether it doesn't, um, certainly from our point of view at Connect, we'd be really happy to 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 continue the dialogue on that subject and a number of other ones too. Um, to see what could be done to, to if you like, uh, encourage uh, a greater participation among the people of Tetbury in community life. And of course, we, we've touched on a few subjects here which are really key um, to everybody's interests, we think. Um, so whatever happens on Thursday, Anne, um, uh, we'd be very happy to to assist in whatever way that we can at Connect to, to move things forward positively. Um, but on that note, um, it's been a real pleasure uh, to talk with you this 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 evening, as it is, uh, and um, and to to hear from you your your thoughts and ambitions etc. With regard to what what you'd like to do and achieve and what you're working on currently, um, and hopefully uh, that's going to be enlightening to to those that to, that listen to this in the next few days and beyond. Um, so can we thank you and for your time uh, in, in 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 spending with us this after this evening, and. Um, Shall we say we wish you the very best of luck uh, for Thursday. Thursday and may yes. may the may the best person person uh, <laughs> may the best person uh, recognised by by the majority I suppose uh, win over you and uh, we look forward to speaking to you again uh, sometime very soon Anne. Thank you Anne. Thank you very much. Thank you. So there we are. We've been learning from Anne Pierce, the independent candidate for both the Tetbury Town Council and Cotswold District Council this coming Thursday. So voters, don't forget to take your voto ID this time. I don't know what that's about, but um, we'll see how that works. Uh, it probably is going to reduce the turnout. I, I wouldn't expect it to increase it, but we'll see what happens about that and about the election on Friday morning, I guess. But you have been listening to our podcast In Town with Anne Pierce. Town Councillor for Tepri in Gloucestershire. Check out the podcast show notes for details about Tepri Town Council and the election taking place this week in and around the district. Do also look out for our further podcasts on our In Conversation page of, Connect, of the Connect website. It is here where we will be meeting more guests to talk about their businesses, their fascinating lives, or both. Until we're back with you next time, it's goodbye from me, Helen King. And from me, David Charles. Goodbye. Goodbye.